This video is sponsored by New Type HQ. Get everything you need to build your own custom gumpler on their website. Link in the description. Yep, they deliver even when there's a lockdown. Let's get this video started. Am I recording it? What's up, GFAM? Welcome to the behind the scene of the new Gundam. Let's do this. This custom Gunpla project started off just like any other one and until I got a message to collaborate with Gio San Pedro. How it goes is like, he's gonna build his, I'm gonna build mine at first, but then we were thinking that it couldn't gel, it, it wouldn't tie up the storyline and it wouldn't be genuine as well. So what we, what we come up with at the end is that Gio would be sending his unit to me so that I can work on it as well. So after months and months into work, because he, he does have a full-time job and we got to work according to the schedule that both of us can work in. Right after the fast, I hit him out. I said, dude, it's time to do the new Gundam. And then he said, his side is ready. And then here we go. Here comes the collaboration. So what happened was it took us seven days to really properly coordinate and all that. And to be honest, I was really, really sick after building the fast for the first four days. So I really can't do anything. I was bed rested and I was on medication as well. So I felt dizzy, I felt sleepy most of the time. But then when I got better, it's time to get to work. So during the first seven days, I didn't really do anything. And then on the seventh day itself, I finally got the pack from Gio San Pedro. So in the Philippines, we have really strict laws during the lockdown. We can't really go out. And then what we had to do is we had to use Lala Move, which is one of the local delivery service here. And then what happened was we tried and tried and tried getting delivery guys to deliver it for me, like from his house to my house. But the thing is that that ain't happening. So to be honest, on the seventh day, it didn't happen, but it did happen on the eighth day morning. So I got the package on the eighth day morning and then off I go started working on the new Gundam. So what happened was in his video, he did panel line and he did put on some stickers on the joints, especially on the bolts part and stuff like that. So what I had to do first before anything else is to clean up all the panel lines and everything else. So basically I have to undone whatever that he has done in his video. So that really adds up to the workload, but it's okay. It, it, it didn't really take much time because the panel line was really easy to wipe off using lacquer thinner. And then the stickers itself, you can just peel them off and then just clean up with some warm water to really get rid of the glue residue. So if you guys are peeling off some decals, especially some realistic decals from Bandai, peel it off and then after that get some hot water or warm water to really rub it off and then you are golden. And then it was time to do the video shoot for the before so that I can I can have something to show on my video as well and shooting the intro of me unboxing the box that I got from Gio San Pedro. After that, it's time to come up with the color scheme. And this is what the whole video is going to be about. Talking to you guys about coming up with the color scheme for the new Gundam because a lot of people has been asking me how do I come up with the color combination? What are the tricks and what are my workflows and stuff like that? And this is what I'm going to talk to you guys about. So coming up with the color scheme is no easy task, to be honest, because there's so many color combinations. And then if you mess up the color combination and once you started painting it, it's going to turn amazing or it's going to turn like shit. That's the that's the truth. OK, you can either go wrong or you can go super right. So in the end, what I chose for is a black team because it was going to be Batman inspired. But honestly speaking, I had a lot of trouble doing that. But then again, given that it's only seven days, I really, really don't have much time to finish up all the customization that I was supposed to be in. But you know what? I'm glad I didn't because it would be too much details on an RG. So for the color scheme, I went for a black team, a black and then dark gray and then orange to really pop things up and not to mention silver on the armor plates as well as well as the inner frames so before even coming up with the color scheme i do get some help from an app called pocket palette which is a color palette app and then on this app itself you can see that so i have three tones here which is black dark gray and orange this is what i use on a regular basis when i'm trying to figure out colors and all of that is really useful because you can see real time on what color works and what color doesn't 
So remember this, whenever you are coming up with the color scheme for your custom build, please remember that you always need one main color. For example, in my new Gundam, it's going to be black. You got to be needing another complementary color, which will harmonize with your main color. In my case, it's going to be dark gray. And then you will need some colors to really pop it off all. For that, I chose for orange. And then the silver thing is really neutral. It would work really well with any color. So I just throw it in the bunch as well. With the color scheme is done. I didn't do any sketches this time for the entire design. I just wing it. And one thing that really, really good, and I think that would really help you guys when you guys are sorting your color on which part to color and all that is using the runners itself. So if you have ever built a Gundam before, you know that all those runners, they came with their colors separated. So all of the runners, they have their own respective colors. And then you can choose which one to be your main color based on the colors of the runners. For example, for the new Gundam, I color up the main dark color of the runner to be the main black color. And then after that, the gray color will be painted on the white parts. So it's really easy for you to sort out all your colors just based on the runners itself. Every runners has their very own color and then you just use them as an indication of what color is going to be what. And then it's time to choose some of the parts where you can mask them off and have some actual color separation in the parts so that those colors will come together with certain parts in between. After you sort out your bunch, you can sort out, you can identify which part will be used as in-betweens as in like it's gonna have the bold black and dark gray in my color all the small little parts all the details will be in orange color which is the color that i really really like and it really pops up in the new gundam so with all the colors done and parts are separated it's time to really get into customization the RG New Gundam is really, really detailed. I would say like one of the most detailed RG kits I've ever seen right after RG Freedom that I built before. Like the RG New Gundam has even more details than the RG Sazabi. So this time I skip out on a lot of the parts as in like I didn't do much about it. Uh, usually I will panel line a lot, a lot, a lot on my kits. But then this time, given that it has so many details, I really wouldn't want to spoil the details and by making it too messy so I didn't even change out the trusters I didn't even do much of the panel lines but the one I did I make sure that they are really good and they look original as well so initially I had a plan for the new Gundam to, to have like a removable chest armor piece and then the backpack itself can be enclosed and open up to become a cape and it has like a blade armor just like a full-fledged batman mobile suit but the thing is that i'm really really tight with schedule and the whole plan was literally too ambitious i would say so at the end i really have to scrap all those parts but i did come up with the chest armor piece using tamiya putty but the thing is that that thing won't ever harden and even if, when it's hard it's still flexible-ish it's still like rubberish. Yeah, uh, it, I had a really tough time working with that material. I realized that it's not made to create scratch builds out of it. Even so, it has to be really small. And the design that I have was really, really complicated. And then it just wouldn't work. In the end, it broke off. It broke my heart as well. But I have to move on from there. But luckily, I didn't do it. If not, the whole build would be ruined because of the details. So after the customizing part is all done, all the parts are clean up, they are washed properly in my ultrasonic cleaner, and then it's time for the painting to start. So when it comes to painting, I really want to paint it matte black instead of any kind of black because matte black would really look like the armor from Batman itself, you know, like Batman suit and all that. So matte black is the way to go with matte dark gray and then the orange itself would be matte it's not gloss and for the matte black it's really tricky to get right because i did do a matte black on my sazabi and then i mess it up by putting on some stupid top coat so this is like a redemption 2.0 for me when it comes to matte black colors and then i did try out the satin top coat and it just didn't work for this build so i went back to using mr hobby semi gloss top coat and it worked really well. So basically there was a lot and a lot a lot of painting going on, especially with the spoons and all that that is happening behind the scene, as well as getting the color mixture right for the dark gray. So at the end, the, the perfect color for me would be 10 part black and then two part gray. And right after the experiment, I started out painting and the painting process is a pain. I would say easily I spent more than 36 hours in painting alone and sitting right in front of the airbrush paint booth 
for 18 hours straight, uh, almost like two days straight, has really gotten the best part of me in terms of my back pain. So I got really bad back, back ache. I had to rest. I had to lie down for a bit. And every time I started painting, when I started sitting down, it starts acting up again. And then it got worse to the point where I really had no choice but to go get some salon passes and then start sticking them out all over my back. Thanks to my wife for that. And yeah, she took the picture for you guys as well. So right after the paint job, I have to do the masking. So thank God I did the unicorn build. You guys can check it out right here where a lot of the masking was needed. And then I really, really learned how to mask properly by learning the mistake I did with the RG unicorn. So I stand by whatever that I said, you learn by making mistakes. So one tip about masking is that make sure that your masking tape is not too sticky when it's out of the tape roll. And then what you gotta do is stick it on your table, stick it on your shirt, stick it on your cutting board or anything like that so that they are not so sticky anymore. And then it's really important when you paint, you don't paint at the side of it, you paint straight on 90 degrees onto the masking tape itself. Don't paint it at an angle because sometimes the paint will seep into under the tape itself and it would really ruin your masking job. So during the assembly part, one thing you got to remember is that our fingers will get oily over time. You will get residue, you will get oily and stains. So, so in order to protect your paint job, you got to wear gloves for that. So that's what I did. I wore gloves and then luckily the paint job didn't got ruined or anything didn't get oiled up or anything because that might jeopardize your semi-gloss top coat later on. So right after the assembly, it's time to put on some decals because in my previous MG Fast video, I didn't put on decals first. Instead, I did the weathering first and then only the decals, which is a wrong step actually. So you should do decals and then your weathering. Okay, panel line can do it in between. It doesn't really matter. But then again, I did the panel line first, which is nothing special. And then I did the decals. And last but not least, I did the weathering. Uh, for decals, you really, really gotta be, you gotta be really precise, I would say, and then to really let the thing dry off. And then immediately after it has dried off, please, please put on the top coat to really set it in. So when it comes to the weathering part, I chose to go for color chipping instead of like rust or anything like that, because that would be another level that I would like to achieve in the future, like making rust, making making spots and all that. So for chipping on black armor, I did research up on YouTube and all that, but none of them are talking about chipping on black armor. So I did all the dry brushing on the armor part logically, because when you're weathering, you gotta think logically. Like for example, the legs are obviously gonna be the most weather because they are the one touching the ground. And then the body, the arms, the waist itself will have less and less chips because they are not in contact with the floors, with the ground that much, as much as the legs. So the only thing that you want to chip off are the joints part and all that, the edges, maybe they get scratched and all that. But other than that, that's it. Don't weather too much on the body part because it, it just doesn't really make sense. And then for the orange details part, by dry brushing on some dark gray and then top them off with some silver, just a little bit of silver to accentuate that there was a primer underneath and all that and then you are golden. Finally, finish off everything with another layer of semi-gloss top coat, and then you are done with the kit. And then comes the most challenging part for me because I have always come up with ways to really, really present the model kit itself to you guys like in an epic cinematic style. And then I was thinking like this time I have built two. So how can I present it to you guys? properly and then to get you guys hype up as well so this is what i come up with and my setup is generally really really simple it's just a black cloth over a canvas and then just sits on sits on my table and then i have like i have my key light and my ring light on it and that's it it's nothing it's nothing hard you guys can do it as well and then finally that's it so you guys want to watch again the epic bureau you know what let's roll this thing
So after the epic B-roll, it's time to close up and everything. And then it's time to send Gio San Pedro his new Gundam back. And this is what I've come up with. I, I did shoot a little bit of a ASMR sequence and I really hope you guys like it. Enjoy. Oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> So that's it for this video. I really hope you guys like the behind the scenes of the new Gundam, of the new Gundam, of the new Gundam, new Gundam, new Gundam, new Gundam, new Gundam, new Gundam. It's really hard to get the pronunciation right, but new Gundam. No matter what it is, I hope you guys enjoy the video. I'll be doing this kind of behind the scenes video with every of my custom build because I truly felt that with every custom build, there are different challenges and different mistakes to be learned from. So no matter what, it's all about practice, 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 and, and keep on making mistakes because the best way to learn is by making mistakes and actually learn from it. And it's not about the tool, it's not about what you got, it's not about what you have. If you don't have an airbrush, do it with spray cans because it's more economically, financially more budgeted. But then again, nothing is stopping you. Go ahead, do what you can. If you really want to start customizing yourself, please, do it right now. Simple off, start out by planning your color scheme and then write it on a piece of paper, probably just sketch out a little bit here and there about your color scheme and then you will be done. And then sooner or later, you will realize that, oh shit, I did this, I did that. Yeah, congratulations, you did it, bro. But anyway, this is Justin from Studio G. And if you guys like this kind of video, please consider subscribing as well as clicking the bell notification beside to get notified every time I post a video. And no matter what it is, keep on building, keep on practicing, and have a good, safe day, everybody. Bye-bye.